glad to be back for week two. Oh. No, seriously, thank you guys so much for being here. You know, we know that the semester gets super busy. We know that you all have that discussion board due tonight that you're going to crank out as soon as you get home. There are so many other things you guys could be doing right now uh, four weeks out from graduation. Like, literally so many things. Um, Why are you here? be doing homework, grocery shopping, playing Pokemon Go. You could be eating, growing your LinkedIn network, playing Fortnite with your grandma. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, especially after last week. Let's just say the technical difficulties just got way out of hand last week. Um, yeah, but we'll just blame it on that whole, like, tornado thing that happened. Uh, apparently messed with a lot of people. I saw a news article this week in a newspaper about the, about the whole storm, and it read, Major disastrous storm turns random. Random? <laughs> out, of, out of all the headlines, they just used random as the adjective. Not sure why. But, um, anyways... This past week, we had the very much anticipated SGA elections uh, and campaigns, but we didn't need to tell you that because I'm sure at one point when you went to class or just stepped foot on campus, Ugh. there was someone that swarmed you, a campaign manager asking, did you vote? Have you voted oh, yet? Gosh. Can you please PTSD, vote? PTSD. Yeah, you know, because the one thing that Liberty needs is more politics. A girl literally chased me into the bathroom this week. Really? Uh, yeah, she ran in there with her iPad and just threw it in my face and said, have you voted yet? She kept asking, asking, asking until she started foaming at the mouth and then started seizing on the ground. Um, Stephen, I, I think she may have been having a seizure. Eh, who knows. Anyways, speaking of seizures, did everyone see Convo on Friday? I, I did not. Ah, well, Nasser interviewed two people, uh, authors, who wrote The Faith of Donald J. Trump. Because writing a book about a complete oxymoron is a great strategy, apparently. Ah, yeah. Um, speaking of oxymoronic books, it is time for the, the oxymoronic, oxymoronic book, book box. box. Ooh, this looks like a page turner. Let's see here. We first have the talent and creative accomplishments of Nickelback. Hmm, sounds interesting. Interesting. Taken seriously their entire career, Nickelback has won over 68 Grammy Awards in categories such as This is a song that was written and Is this music? And finally, can you please turn that song down? I'm on the phone with my dad. <laughs> co-authored by clinically insane actor Charlie Sheen and the co-host of American Idol Season 1, Brian Dunkelman, the talent and creative accomplishments of Nickelback show us how silly music was in the mid-2000s. Wow, I'll have to give that one a read. What's that? All right. Ooh, this one. This one right here is a real page turner. Oh. oh. How to Make a Great Movie by Kirk Cameron. Mmm, my favorite. This book takes you step by step through Kirk Cameron's movie making process and his controversial screenwriting strategy he coined called Pick Something No One Is Passionate About and Write a Movie in 20 Minutes. <laughs> Often called the evangelical Michael Bay, Kirk Cameron has made the critically acclaimed Saving Christmas and mm. Unstoppable. Mm. Take this journey as we get an up-close look into how he is currently making his next movie called Why Do You Guys Hate Me? Mm. Oh my. Another page turner. Preaching the Word of God, How to Finish a Series, a book by David Nasser. Lean in on this campus pastor's life and learn valuable lessons from chapters like Dress Hip, that way college students will think I'm a pretty cool guy. And how and when to put your foot all the way into your mouth. And lastly, how to be the pastor of a campus and literally never be seen on campus. Plus a bonus never finished chapter at the very end based on Galatians. Oh, 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 agreed. Uh, it looks like we have some reviews in the back of this one. Oh yes, this book comes highly reviewed. <clears throat> Chris Tomlin says, yeah, I'd give it a three and a quarter stars, but the quarter star is only because he claims to be my best friend. The entire worship collective said, this book was so great we were all jumping around. We know we do that all day, every day, but the book was also awesome. Oh, our final book. Oh my gosh, it's the book itself. The Faith of Donald J. Trump, a spiritual biography. Let's read the description. Based on extensive inside sources, including exclusive interviews with the president and vice president, the faith of Donald J. Trump explores his rarely discussed but deeply important religious beliefs and relationships with leading evangelicals. Mm -hmm. Interesting. His faith is outlined and defined by the important moments in his life, including 
his three marriages, having an affair with a porn star and paying her a lot of money to shut up about it, degrading women but justifying it by calling it locker room talk, and oh, saying abortion is bad. So it's okay, he's on a journey. Well, that's all for this week's Oxymoronic Book Box. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great show for you tonight. I'm Abby Michael. And I'm Stephen Cook. And, and this, this is After Curfew! <laughs> Hi, I'm your After Curfew Postman with a special message just for you. Please follow us on YouTube and other social medias at LU After Curfew.